Hey, how are you? My name is Emilio. Thank you so much for spending the time and joining me on this video today. We are looking at Active Directory Domain Trust. So you've got two domains that you want to connect together to share resources, to share permissions, whatever that may be. We're going to be talking about that today. Please do subscribe, click on that button on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. So let's talk about domain trusts, what they are and how to actually set one up. Now, before we do get into the video, you're probably an IT tech, you're probably an IT professional of some sort. Check out my description below because I've got a number of different training courses, big length training courses available around all things technology. Some of these may be very, very helpful to you and help you in your IT career. So do check those out if you do want to learn more. But back onto domain trusts. We're gonna be doing this demo on two different domains. We've got a Windows Server 2019 domain, and we've also got an older Windows Server 2008 R2 domain, and we're gonna connect both of these domain controllers, essentially the two domains that we've got running on these two, together and form a domain trust. So we're now gonna log into my computers, into my servers themselves, and set this up. Okay, so we've logged into a domain controller. Now at the moment, I've got two domain controllers. I've got one at the IP address of 172.16.1.145. This particular domain controller is running Windows Server 2019 and you'll see that it is a data center evaluation copy. Of course, you wanna be doing this in a uh, valid uh, licensed copy. Our other domain controller is this one right here and this is at 172.16.1.30 and this is a separate domain. Uh, now this is under the redghost.com domain, right? DC Servo one is the name of the actual domain controller under this IP, and that is the domain itself, redghost.com, while the other one is homedemo.com. Now, of course, what we wanna do is when we are setting what's called a trust, is we are establishing a connection between one domain and then the other domain. You're actually essentially connecting the two domains together so that they can interact with each other and you can actually share resources, share security groups, share users, all of that sort of stuff. One common reason that you may want to set up a domain trust is in the event, for example, one company that you work at, for example, purchases another company, this other company has their own domain, and now all of a sudden you've got two domains that are being managed independent of each other, well, you can either do two things. You either move and migrate everything from this other domain over to this new domain, or you actually get them connected together so that you can use the things together. And then you can actually migrate things directly from one domain to another using a tool uh, for migration, AD the, the ADMT, AD migration tool, which we're gonna look at, at a separate in another video but uh, you essentially would transfer those services over, or you could remain using the two domains just in this domain trust. And the great thing about having these two domains is that it just lets you easily be able to use all the resources between the two domains as if they can talk to each other. So for example, uh, John Smith, who may be a user within Home Demo, he's a marketing user, and for example, he's now working with another marketing user that's now part of this other domain, redghost.com, because remember these are two companies that are now going to use the services together at one. There's now two marketing people, and what if marketing person one wants to use some files that are on the marketing server or the marketing file server on the other domain? Well, he doesn't have to create, you don't have to go and create a separate account on this other domain. You could actually still log in with the same username and password, the same credentials that were set up in perhaps in the other domain under redghost.com, and you'll actually be able to authenticate and then log in to homedemo.com domain because there's the trust established between those two domains. So it's a great feature. And look, it's not very common that you need to go and establish a domain trust, but once you do know how to do it, in the event that you do have to do it in future, it makes the process very, very easy and it saves IT administrators a lot of headaches, especially when you're looking at company mergers, um, takeovers and all that sort of stuff as well. So let's look at doing this right now. So we've got ourselves our homedemo.com and our redghost.com. Now, of course, let's just assume that we've got a company in one state and another company is in a different state, perhaps in the same country. 
The first thing is that those two networks, those two companies, they need to be able to communicate with each other over a network. All right, so now this is the job and the responsibility of a network team to establish connections between these two sites. So you could, they could have dedicated connections, they could have a MPLS setup, they could have a VPN tunnel, something that at least establishes some physical connection from point A to point B, both ways, right? So company A needs to be able to access the network in company B and vice versa. So all of the networking stuff needs to be set up first in the back end to be able to get this connection even working in the first place. Because if the two computers, or if the two networks cannot even communicate with each other, then you're not gonna be able to set up the trust between these two um, companies at all, so, okay? So that's not part of this video, not part of this video itself. So that's something for a network person to go and set up and establish. Make sure that a router can talk to another router, that a firewall can talk to another firewall, that switches can talk to each other between these two networks. Once all of that does, all that stuff happens, it's now the role of the systems administrator, the systems engineer, to now establish the trust itself. Now, what you need to do first is I would almost elementary, the first thing that I would do is see whether they can ping each other. Now, in my case, both of my um, domain controllers are part of the same subnet. So I've just set this up very, very easily because it's part of a demo but I know that the IP address of this particular domain controller under homedemo.com is 145, while the IP of this one is 30, as you can see right there. So the first thing that I'm gonna to try to do is actually try to go and ping, I'm gonna try and ping the IP address of the other domain controller, okay? 1.30. Now in my case, I'm getting a reply. That is good. Let's try the exact opposite over here, where I'm gonna now try to ping the domain controller of my other domain, all right? And I can ping it, that's great. Now, if that isn't working, talk to your network guys, get that working. You need to be able to do that first. The next step is now, let's see if I can ping the actual domain itself. So if, can I ping homedemo.com? No, I can't. Well, it's, it's giving me something funky. I think it's actually going out to the internet. So I'm gonna actually cancel that. But it's actually having some form of issues, okay? It's not actually doing what it needs to be doing. And if I can do the same thing over here, let's say if I try to ping redghost.com, it's actually not going to be able to work either. All right. So what I need to do is now I need to go into my DNS and establish some stuff in there to actually make sure that it can communicate with each other. So the first thing that I'm going to go do is actually set up uh, what's called a um, almost like a connection between my two uh, DNSs, right? So I need I need my DNS to be established, my, my actual DNS forward and lookup zones and secondary zones and all that conditional forwarders all configured so that the two DNSs can see each other first. So that's almost the first step before we go and get these two trusts working, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into one of my uh, DNS managers, right, in here. So we're assuming here, of course, that you're domain controller is your DNS server as well, okay? So we're going with that assumption. If it's not, you'll have to look at uh, an alternate way, but there are ways to do it either way. But we're assuming that we've got DNS manager, we've got DNS running on our domain controller. Now, what I'm gonna go do is I've got my primary domain right here called Home Demo. I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna say Properties, and I'm gonna say Zone Transfer. So a zone transfer sends a copy of the zone to the servers that request a copy. So I'm gonna allow right here, a zone transfer. I'm also gonna do that on my other domain. Forward lookup, properties, okay, zone transfer. I'm gonna allow zone transfer and apply, okay? Now, the next step is now to actually do what's called, if I right click on here, I'm gonna say new zone, next. And I'm gonna create a secondary zone. So create a copy of a zone that exists on another server. This option helps balance the processing load of primary servers and provides a fault tolerance. So of course, this is really helpful if you have multiple DNS servers. Now in our case, because we've allowed this particular setup first, we actually are allowing it um, under the, uh, the zone transfer to any server. Theoretically, now I should be able to go into secondary zone and say next, All right? So remember I'm under the redghost.com and my other domain is under homedemo.com. So what I'm gonna go do is I'm actually type in here homedemo.com, all right? And say next. And I'm gonna type in here the IP address of my domain controller. 
Okay, great. Hey, that's good. It's actually seen it. So you see it's got a nice big tick and it's actually found the actual server name. The domain controller name is WinServer DC01. So it's found, it's validated, that's looking good. If you're getting some issues here, go back and just double check some stuff. You may need to make sure that the, obviously the network team have done what they need to do to establish the connection between those two first, all right? So once that's done, click on next. Completing the new zone. You have successfully completed the new zone wizard, all right, for home demo, forward home demo, .com DNS. All right, of course, we're doing this from redghost.com and we can click on finish. And now look at this. Right in here, I've now got my homedemo.com listed under a forward lookup zone. All right, let's just go into here. Now we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna go, we're gonna say new zone, next. Secondary zone, next. We're gonna call it redghost.com. We're gonna give it the IP address of my other domain controller. Of course, this could be a fully qualified name as well. Great, let's pick that up. There you go, nice tick, DC Servo 1. Next, finish, and it's now got it right there. And there is all my stuff, right? So that is the first step done. So now DNS is looking good. We are very, very happy with how that is looking. So then really the next thing that you should then really need to be able to do is let's see if I can now ping this. And look at that, it's now pinging from homedemo.com. It can actually now resolve against my redghost.com. All right, so we're looking good. Now, you can sometimes now need to go do some conditional forwarders if you so choose to. You could also do a new conditional forwarder and point it this way. Uh, sometimes it's not needed, but we're not gonna do it in this case, but just be aware that you may need to do conditional forwarders pointing one domain to the other. But in my case, I'm actually quite happy with how all of this works. The next step is now to let's go into the domain and trust area within your domain controller. Okay, so we're gonna close out of our DNS. We're confident that everything is now working and that I've got connection between these two. So here is my 145, my homedemo.com domain. Let's go into the other domain controller. We're gonna close out of DNS manager and we're gonna close out of command prompt. And what we've got open right here is Active Directory Domains and Trusts, okay? So I've got it open on both. Here's my other domain controller. You can also find this by actually going into here. It's part of your Windows Admin list of tools. It's there, right there, Active Directory Domains and Trusts. And this is the area where we're now gonna establish uh, the trust between these two domains. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, uh, well, we don't have to do it from here, but I like to do it from here anyway. So we're gonna right click on Home Demo right here. We're gonna click on properties. I presented a bit of a general overview. So this is the home demo uh, domain name. The description is currently empty. It's gonna give me an overview around the domain functional level as well as the forest functional level, okay? Managed by, who's the manager if there's anything in here? And then trust. So domain trust by this domain outgoing and domain trust this domain incoming. So trusts go both ways. They can go either outgoing only or incoming. So for example, anything from home demo can be outgoing to redghost.com and essentially it's just a one way trust. So you could use security and permissions and users only from one domain to the other but not the other way around. Or you can set it up both ways. In our case, we're gonna set it up both ways because we want both homedemo.com and redghost.com to take advantage of the security and the groups and everything between these two different domains. So if you're happy with that, we're gonna select new trust right here. Welcome to the new trust wizard. So it's gonna help you to create a trust between the domain and of any of the following. Here's some examples. A trust is a relationship that enables users in one domain forest or realm to be authenticated in a specific domain forest or realm. Next. Here is the NetBIOS name or the DNS name. So I'm gonna put in the DNS name. So I'm gonna just type in right here, redghost.com. Remember I'm doing this from homedemo.com over to the domain redghost.com. If we're happy with that, we click on next. So now we've got two options. You've got an external trust or a forest trust. Now an external trust essentially is a domain to a domain trust. A forest trust is a forest to a forest. We'll remember the scenario of two different companies. We want to take advantage of a full connection between these two companies. Let's say there is a company that has multiple domains, a forest that has multiple domains within it and then the other company has a forest with maybe one domain in it, well, you wanna maybe take advantage of all of the domains that sit within the forest. You essentially are creating a forest trust at the top level. 
okay? So I do have other videos that talk about the differences between a forest and a domain, so you can check those out or you can check out online, read some stuff around the differences between the two, but we're gonna actually do this at a forest level. So forest to forest, okay? So it's a transitive trust between two forests that allow users in any of the domains in one forest to be authenticated in any of the domains in the other forest. And next, now do you want this to be two-way, one-way incoming, one-way outgoing? So users, if we're looking at incoming, users in the domain can be authenticated in the specific domain realm or forest, incoming way, and then outgoing is the opposite. Two-way, it goes both ways. So we're gonna select two-way right there, all right? Create the trust for the following. Well, the domain only, the option creates the trust relationship in the local domain or both this domain and the specified domain. So this option creates the trust relationship in both the local and the specified domain. So for example, I'm here on 145, let's go back in here, um, and I'm going into here, and if I go into, my, into here under trust, you'll see that it's blank. So you can either do two things. You can go and create it in just this domain, next, 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 and establish the trust. Then you'll need to go back into the other domain and do it and do it again in here. A scenario where that could be useful is in the event where you've got two different companies, two different ADs, two different domain administrators. Let's say you've got one domain admin on one company, one domain admin on the other one. You don't want one domain admin to have now full access to the other domain controller and do whatever they want. So you're gonna be maybe working together and you both create the relationship on each of the two sides. Okay, so that's essentially the differences. Um, now in my case, I'm gonna do it on both. Okay, I've got the okay from the domain controller admin on the other side. We can go ahead, we're both on the phone, we're communicating. Let's go ahead and do this both ways because it just makes it, you, you do it once rather than doing it twice. And next, now we're gonna specify the domain Red Ghost administrator passwords. So this is the username and password for an account that has admin privileges, domain admin or enterprise admin privileges to that specific domain, all right? So if somebody has full rights into the redghost.com domain. Okay, so you're gonna add those in there. All right, if that has gone through, great. If it hasn't, go check out what's going on and try to re-fix that. Select the scope of authentication for users at redghost.com. So it's a forest-wide authentication. So Windows will automatically authenticate users from the specific specified domain, forest, sorry, for all resources in the local forest or selective authentication. It's not across everything. You can actually select specific uh, forest specific resources within the forest or the domain. We're gonna say it enterprise wide, okay, forest wide. So we're gonna select that top option, say next. Forest wide authentication, yes, we also wanna do that as well. But of course you can select selective if you wanna go and uh, be more specific around that. Okay, so you've selected the following. Here's what's gonna happen. So you've got this domain, home demo, against this domain, red ghost. It's a two way and all the information that is needed in there. And if we're happy, we can now click on next. Summary of what's going on. Do you want to confirm the outgoing trust? No, do not confirm the outgoing trust. Well, yes, we want to confirm it. Well, let, let's double check. Let's make sure everything's working right. And yes, we do want to confirm it as well. Here we go. You successfully completed the trust. The trust relationship was successfully created and confirmed. Route these names, Red Ghost, route these names, local, home demo, finish. There it is. Okay, let's just go back in. So if I now right click and go back into here, under trust, there we go. I've got my homedemo.com and I've now got a trust for redghost.com. It's a forest level and for the uh, this is for the outgoing and here it is for the incoming. Okay, now if everything has worked correctly, I should be able to go back into here, right click on here and there is the opposite because now it's established. We did that two way thing. We trusted both sides. So now homedemo.com is now visible on the other side. So from redghost.com, I can now see homedemo.com. All right, so now the trust is created. That's really all there is to it. Um, to make sure that this is all okay, what you can actually now do is you could actually open up Active Directory. Um, here is our standard AD, uh, users and computers. And of course, I've got here my uh, redghost.com domain. I can go into here and I can say change domain, homedemo.com. Okay, and look at that. I've now connected to the other domain from within my users and computers. Right click, change domain, go back to my original redghost.com and I'm back to that and I've got now a trust established. So I theoretically now can actually log in to a computer on the redghost.com using credentials from my homedemo.com domain. 
And there you have it. That's how to create a trust from start to finish between two domain controllers and between two different domains. So the trust is now set up. Now it's your turn to go and get all this working for you. Please do like, comment, subscribe, clicking on that bell and on the button so that you don't miss out on anything. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.